Hey guys, what's up? It's Crum, and today I am bringing to you a brand new series all about bug abuse in RuneScape. I want to talk about all the bugs that happened from RuneScape Classic up till present day RuneScape, along with mixing in a whole bunch of information that I've been getting through infiltrating current bug abuse communities and going back through the logs from old dead bug abuse communities. Eventually, I want to get some real bug abusers here to interview and ask them questions, find out how much money they're making, why they're doing this, what their biggest bug abuse was, etc. So if you guys enjoy this first video, make sure to let me know in the comment section below so I know to make more. And if you hate this idea, then tear me up in the comment section below too, and I'll know not to make another one. So without further ado guys, this video is going to focus on the early bugs from RuneScape Classic. I think you're really going to enjoy them, a lot of interesting stuff. Around 2002, a bug was found in the game that allowed players to hit 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, and so on. Massively high hits. And this was big back then, because the maximum hit was somewhere around a 30, and we're talking you would need to have max combat and max gear for that, which nobody had. So players abusing this bug were able to dominate players in the wilderness, and they got very wealthy from it. So what happened was, is that knives in the game were originally programmed to be a weapon. So they actually gave weapon aim and weapon power, but they weren't fully finished being coded. So Jagex just never put the weld options on them, so you couldn't actually equip them. But one player, it's unknown who, found out that if you drop a weapon from your inventory, but quickly right click on it before it's out of your inventory to bring up the options menu, which would say like weld in it, then once the item was dropped and everything in the inventory shifted over, if there was a knife now in place of where the weapon was and you hit that weld option that you had stuck open, it would actually equip the knife. And then you would get the weapon aim and power from this. And because the knife wasn't finished being coded, it wouldn't de-equip the weapon that you currently had equipped. And you could also equip multiple knives. So you might have had your rune two hand sword and 10 knives equipped and you could go easily walk into the wilderness and hit people for 50s. You could literally walk in there and one hit people because that's the health that they had back then. So Jagex caught onto this pretty quickly. When you play with knives, eventually you do get cut and they cracked down quite hard because this was one of the first big bugs that was abused heavily in RuneScape. So they ended up banning anybody that used this in PvP and they temporarily banned any player who used this glitch to train. Reading back through some of the old blog posts that people made about this bug, it seemed that a lot of people really thought this was unfair because at the time, they thought this was like a little secret you could do. It kind of got passed around as just like a little Easter egg of the game. And really, I guess a lot of players back then were doing it, and a lot of really high level and notorious players ended up getting banned for abusing this bug. This was more of a harmless bug, but it did have some complications that arose, and it was done using the same software that was used to commit the Great Party Hat dupe that happened in 2003. So players could use the cheating software known as AutoRune to construct packets to make the game do things that normally you wouldn't be able to do. So what players did in 2002 is they made a little script that was only like 11 lines long as you can see on screen now, that actually allowed them to attack any NPC in the game that they wanted, even if that NPC wasn't normally attackable. This meant that quest NPCs, bankers, whatever they wanted to kill, they could kill. The main one to note here is the Banker Massacre, which is actually touted on AutoRune's website as being one of their greatest achievements before AutoRune was killed the first time Jagex implemented anti-botting measures into the game. So they touted this as one of their greatest achievements. And what they did was, is they used this script to go into banks and kill all the bankers so nobody could access the bank whatsoever. And they say that a lot of players actually found this funny, but the Jmods not so much. One guy actually states here that after abusing this bug, he went and talked to a Jmod in-game, and the Jmod was not pleased at all, and we can actually see the picture of this guy's character in the black hole after the Jmod sent him here. Shortly after, Jagex fixed this bug, but they didn't fix the problem with Autorune being able to manipulate packets. And using the same software, players were able to do things like attack themselves in the wilderness, make themselves invisible at the makeover mage, and cast spells without any runes or even a target for that matter. And later, as I'm sure everybody knows, Autorune was used to commit the great party hat dupe that made pink party hats the cheapest hat in the game. You know, a really cool history behind this, and this definitely sparked one of the biggest abuses in RuneScape history where they were able to actually construct packets themselves and have the game do whatever they wanted. So way back in the early days of RuneScape, we're talking 2001, 
they would send players who were breaking rules to the area known as the black hole and the black hole was just an area in the game that was completely black it would stop the player from being able to move and it would take all the players logins away so they wouldn't be able to teleport out and you know we're talking six years before the home teleport was ever released so that wasn't an option a perfect place to send people that were extremely malicious in the game that were scamming that were botting whatever but of course this is 2001 there was always a lot of talk about like little easter eggs in the game or like cool things that can happen and so eventually a lot of players deliberately began doing these bad things so they could see what the inside of the black hole actually looked like now of course this was a problem you don't want an increase in misbehaving so Andrew Gower programmed a clone of the black hole, which he dubbed the black hole experience. And players could get there by going to the Dwarven Mine and buying a disc of returning, this is how they got implemented into the game, from Boot the Dwarf. And then only once they had this disc, which cost 10 GP, they could climb down the ladder next to him and go into the black hole experience. Now the problem with this is that unless the player brought any teleport runes out, the only way they could ever get out was by using their disc of returning. If they dropped it and let it disappear, that was it. Their account was completely stuck in the black hole experience. And so, of course, a lot of people started abusing this. They told other players that for something really cool to happen in the game, they would need to go to this black hole experience and then drop their disc of returning while they were in there and wait for it to disappear. Or they would get in there with them and tell them to trade it over or whatever have you. And then they used this to blackmail them. They would get items off of them and all these other things to take their stuff or just make their account unplayable. And you know, at this time, there's like no mechanism to prevent the trading of the disc of returning or the dropping of the disc of returning. This was very early RuneScape. Definitely a very iconic bug. And the only way that these players could actually get out is if Jagex manually rescued them. So eventually that's what happened and they got rid of the black hole and you can no longer buy disc of returning and that's why they're extremely rare in RuneScape 3. This is kind of a minor one, but it was used to prevent players from either entering the wilderness or leaving the wilderness in areas where there was some sort of web or like a doorway. Uh, the biggest example being the mage training arena. This was often used in there to trap players from entering or leaving. And what it was, is if you kill the player using the Guthic's Claws spell, it would have these little tentacle things, claws, that come up from the ground and attack the player. If you dealt the final blow with that spell, then that animation would be glitched and the claws would still show long after their death, creating this impassable, immovable object in the world until the server restarted. You know, a, a neat bug anyways, that was often used to trap players in certain locations and really disrupt their gameplay. Previous to the 25th of January 2001, it was entirely possible on RuneScape to consume copious amounts of beer and become super powerful. In fact, this bug was dubbed the Super Strength Beer Cheat, and it allowed players to keep drinking beer to continually increase their strength level. There was no cap on it. And so someone brought this to the attention of Andrew pretty quickly after there was a few massive killing sprees that people went on after drinking a whole bunch of beer. And Andrew released a news post saying that he's now fixed it and modified it so it works like it does now in the game. You can only get a set bonus now from drinking the beer. However, it didn't mark any change to how certain alcohols work in the game where you can drink a whole bunch and get a ridiculously low level. Which allowed players to do methods like whining, meaning they could gain experience without getting any hit points experience, making some of the better PKing builds way back in RuneScape Classic. And finally, I want to talk about one last bug that happened on the release day of the Wilderness. So this allowed lower level players to attack higher level players without giving the higher level players a chance to fight back. Now it's not really clear if they could only attack with range or magic, so if anybody actually played back then and experienced this firsthand, that would be awesome to know. But this definitely gave those lower players an advantage in the Wilderness, especially where it was release day and it would have been a new thing. I imagine perhaps a few lower level players really made it like bandits with some of the gear that they might have gotten off higher level players from killing them using this glitch. But it was patched very very quickly after the release of the wilderness. Another bug that there isn't a lot known about, but there seems to be some evidence to alluding that it actually was a thing, is that there was some sort of 65,000 GP dupe glitch way back towards the release of RuneScape, like 2001 era. So if anybody has any details about that, I'd also like to know about it. 
And that is all the bugs that we have time to talk about in this video. I covered most of the main ones from the RuneScape Classic era. There wasn't a whole lot of like detrimental economy wrecking bugs that happened way back in the day. And thank God because that really would have set RuneScape up on a bad path. Other than the party hat dupe, but I neglected to talk about that one because I think that's a story that everybody has heard in RuneScape already. So there's no sense in beating that dead horse again. As we progress throughout this series, we're really going to get into some more of the meat and potatoes of these really big game breaking bugs and abuses that happened throughout RuneScape. And I already have a couple interviews lined up with people, both from around the 2010 to 2012 era of the game, that were involved in some really big dupe bugs, so I think that is going to be very interesting. If you enjoyed this video guys, make sure to let me know below so I know to make another one like it. And we just surpassed over 5,000 subscribers. That is crazy. Thank you so much. Also, there is a brand new video of things only old school RuneScape players will remember coming up very soon, so stay tuned for that. And until next time guys, love, peace, and chicken grease.